Hello, so this is a module from uh, the Neocardio Lab for um, specifically designed to provide some support regarding the use of TomTech Arena for the measurements of strain by speckle tracking echo. So we will go through with some of the principles of how to use this platform in order to um, better assess cardio, uh, cardiac function uh, using strain and strain rate assessment with 2D uh, imaging. So um, I will be opening the TomTech platform. And once we arrive on TomTech, so once we arrive on TomTech, we have uh, here uh, our patient that's been selected. So uh, there's many ways of importing uh, studies within the TomTech platform. One of them is uh, by using the import button. And um, once we're in the import button, we can scan a directory of interest, uh, either on a local server or on a remote server. Um, and my particular uh, TomTech station is also uh, associated with the single packs. So we could always uh, use the single uh, pack system of the um, hospital center or the structure in which you are working and put the patient ID here and eventually select the patient and import it into your main platform. So here we'll be opening this patient who's a participant um, of one of our trials. And as you can see, there is uh, in these panels, uh, first the thumbnail, and um, there are 130 clips to this study, and they're being loaded currently. So as they're loading, you can see that there's a format of four. You can decide to switch it to a format of one um, or a format of two. Uh, you can use a two side by side, uh, but we will be using a four. Um, here, uh, depending on where you are, you can pause and then advance on a frame by frame basis your images, or you can ask to play the clips uh, that are uh, recorded. Uh, you have on this panel side, um, different uh, information. So for example, if you wanna adjust the brightness or the contrast of the selected images, and then you have the tool for the measurements um, here. And uh, these are for some of the conventional measures uh, of interest. Uh, so, for example, we can have some of the measurements related to the 2D, uh, to the Doppler, to the M mode, and then within here, uh, we can choose the different packages um, for the measurements of the different structures. But today, we will be interested in using uh, this platform to uh, do assessments of um, speckle tracking echocardiography uh, to measure deformation. So um, we will be selecting a few clips. And to select a few clips um, for, first of all, the 2D uh, evaluation, um, we will be selecting uh, a clip in the parasternal short axis of the left ventricle. So here we have a few. So to select, I press the Control button. And then while pressing, I can click on my different clips that I'm interested in. So let's just select um, all of those that are in the parasternal short axis. And then I need also apical four chamber views, looking at the LV. And then here we have views of the LV and the apical three chamber view and then apical two chamber view. And then we would be good to start. So now that I have selected, I can hover through some of the thumbnails and I can use my um, right click button of the mouse. And what I'm interested in is the 2D cardiac performance analysis package. So the machine will be loading some of these images. And as it is loading, we will be seeing the platform that we will be using for uh, speckle tracking analysis, which includes uh, measurements of deformation of the right ventricle and left ventricle on the longitudinal plane, as well as the left ventricle on the circumferential plane. Uh, we can use packages also to measure left atrial and right atrial strain, uh, but I will not cover uh, this today uh, on this workshop. So here we have some of the images. So we are currently on the um, 
cardiac performance analysis package. And as you can see, um, I would like to, first of all, start. Um, so you have the apical views, you have the short axis views, and then you have the right ventricle. And so as you can see, this is convention for adult uh, imaging, uh, while we are more in a pediatric convention with the apical four chamber view inverted. So here, uh, what we can start is to try to find uh, the best view of our LV, um, where, and I can just click on the underlying image. And so here, I think I can see nicely my left ventricle. And so I will use this one for my apical four chamber view. Then I'm going to use this one for the apical three chamber view. And then for my two chamber, not the ideal one, but I'll be using this view. So we will start with apical. And if you only have, let's say, one of these views, um, we can do what we call a peak longitudinal strain, which is not a global strain. It's not looking at all the walls of the LV, but uh, typically uh, in some of the studies, we may use only the uh, apical four chamber view uh, and do a peak longitudinal strain in that plane. But now we have the three views, so we will be using this. So the software, first of all, starts with the apical two chamber view. And in this, um, context, first of all, you can see that there's ECG gating with our images, but it might happen that some images don't have ECG gating. So you can see that there is a selection here that's called M mode. And the M mode has already found the uh, ECGs, uh, QRS for activation. Um, but one thing you can do is actually use your M mode uh, by tracing a line. Uh, to be able to uh, recognize where is your diastole. And so here, this is the selector. So the period selector tells you that the program will be using the entire selection here. So if for the analysis, but you could choose to only select only one element. You can also use the actual arrow to trace an M mode through the ECG. And you can see here that the beginning of the QRS is actually more here and more here, and that you have another one that is here. So I can use my right button to set the R wave here to indicate the two cardiac cycles. By using my period selector, I can figure out the end of diastole. So end of diastole is when it's completely filled. So it's probably closer to the beginning of the QRS. And then end of systole is just before opening of the valve. So it would be likely around here. And then I would select the entire period selector. So just as a recap, this zone is important in the M mode to be able to select which cardiac cycles you're interested in. And usually we would like two cardiac cycles. So you might have loops that are like eight, nine, 10 cardiac cycles, and you want to select the two of them that you're the most in interested in, in analyzing. You want to identify your R waves. So if your R waves are not already pre-identified, you want to either use whatever QRS system you have here on the image to be able to identify the, QR to the R waves. You can use also the M mode. And whenever you have a QRS, uh, you can use your right button click and set the R wave. Then finally, you want to select your end diastole and your end of systole. Um, and you're ready to go. So because you have identified end of diastole and systole, it's first going to start with the end of systole. So it tells you you can do either a three-click step where the machine is going to try to identify the borders for you, or you can actually trace the contour yourself. So you press on contour, and you want to try to identify the border between the endocardial surface and the blood surface. Once you have done your contour, you right click, and then you can re right click so that it calculates. 
So then it's going to calculate to be able to see, and you're going to have to adjust your contour to make sure that it, have pick, it has picked up the right areas and the right borders. And you can see here that there's a few adjustments that are needed. Okay, and then you can right click again. So here we have done just an endocardial layer. You can always choose to do the endo and the epi, but you would have to trace the epicardial layer too. And if you don't want to see the arrows, you are able to just see the contour to make sure that actually the tracking is adequate. And this was captured at 136 frames per second in RAM images. So uh, for the program, it's easy to track appropriately. So right now, what it's giving you is the information of these segments from anterior to posterior. And it's negative because each of these segments are contracting. And so they're shortening in systole. It provides you with an estimate of the ejection fraction, the end diastolic volume and end systolic volume here. And you can choose to, for example, remove the M mode display that you had traced or place back your M mode display. You can choose to go back to the tracing in systole and diastole, and you can look at the exact segment analysis. So if you go in segment analysis, again, here you have that M mode display that you can remove. And what this is gonna show you is that you have your ECG tracing. You have your two cardiac cycle, and you actually have, here you see strain. The strain measures, which means the percent deformation during systole as the cardiac cycle is progressing in systole. And you can see that the peak of the contraction is pretty much aligned along your line of end systole that you had identified on the M mode. So here you had told the software that the end of your systole is around here. And you can see that pretty much all the segments that are identified here are aligned and contracting at their peak at the time of the end of systole. So there's pretty much good synchrony for all these segments of the walls. And so the segments are identified by definition by color here. And what you have to be careful is that the software did not know that your chamber has been reverted to the pediatric convention of imaging. And so actually the orange one is um, a basal anterior and not basal inferior because the anterior side is here and this is the inferior side. So you have to be careful and you have to know what you're looking at. So for example, uh, your basal here inferior has a peak of contraction at minus 20.9%, which means that from his length in diastole to the length of systole, there was a drop of about 21% in the length. So the contraction was about 21%. And the average of all these curves is provided here. And the peak of the average here is minus 29.53, which is outlined here. So let's say that there are segments that you're not happy about. Let's say that you feel the contraction or the tracking or you're losing this border. You can choose to remove this out of the calculation. And you can see that suddenly your average is now at minus 31.4. But I do trust the tracking of that. And it is normal that at the basal area, there's less contraction just because it's uh, surrounded by fibrous tissue. So we would keep that. So we are done with the apical two chamber view. And so now uh, we would like to switch to our apical four chamber view. So we would actually click here on the apical four chamber view. And you can see that here it asks us to do a period selection. And so it, because it did not detect the actual ECG for some reason, and you can either do an M mode or you can actually try to trace the ECG, and what we're going to do is try to locate the ECG on the actual image, and you can see that if I do this, this, I have at least one cardiac cycle, and then I can delete this one. And so knowing this, I want to identify the peak of diastole, 
which seems to be around here. And then the peak of systole. which seems to be around here. And now I have my period selection of my LD and I'm able to trace my LD. and then make sure that it has been well identified for the diastolic phase. And then we can check if the tracking looks good and it seems to be good. So we can open and we could even do on a frame by frame to see if the tracking is adequate. And then we can go back, we remove the zoom. And now you can see that there's a layer that's been added. And so for this one, again, there's white because of my M mode. I have one cardiac cycle. My average, which is the white curve is at minus 28.1. I can see all my segments, same thing. Here, basal inferior septal is actually basal anterior lateral because this is pediatric convention and it still thinks that it's an adult-based uh, image acquisition. We are here on the strain, which means it's percent of deformation, negative being shortening and positive uh, being lengthening. So the one thing we can do is also look at the strain rate. And what you can see is that there is uh, an E and an A waveform um, during the strain rate. Strain rate is the velocity in one per second at which um, this deformation occurs. So same thing, we have the average curve. So the peak strain rate in average was minus 2.8. We see it here. And you can just see probably if you hover over that white, it's minus 2.78. And you can find your early and your late diastolic strain rate. So your early is at 3.33, which is positive because you get lengthening in diastole and it's a speed. And it's so it's one of the markers of the longitudinal uh, deformation for uh, diastole. So the early diastolic strain rate in, um, in the apical 14 review. You can also find the displacements, which means that this is actually the longitudinal and the transverse. So longitudinal means on this plane and transverse means on this plane. So on the plane of towards the inside of the cavity. And so you can see that each segment will have different measurements of displacement. So for example, the red one here, which is the basal anterior lateral. I don't, don't think into the names that they provide you. It's actually inverted. Um, is gonna be at 5.1 millimeter of longitudinal displacement, which means it goes down by 5.1 millimeter. You also have a velocity of this displacement, so how quickly the displacement occurred, uh, which is not a typical measurement uh, function that's been described in the, at least neonatal population. So we usually look at the strain and, and the strain rate and the longitudinal, longitudinal uh, plane. So we've done the apical four chamber. We are now at the apical three chamber view. Same thing, it automatically picked up the ECG tracing, but we are gonna obviously make sure that our tracing is uh, making sense. So uh, here, this is a patient that you can see that there is some movement. So probably you're gonna wanna select the adequate cardiac cycle, identifying the apical, four chamber, uh, apical three chamber view. And so hence why, we're likely going to pick up the cycle here.
And so as you can see, there is a cycle that starts here and then here. And then from there, your end of diastole is just after the QRS and the end of systole is just here. So we're gonna select our one cardiac cycle for this view and we are going to trace And it provides you indicators. So here you can see that you need to do some readjustments to make sure that you're actually tracking the appropriate borders. And then based on this, you want to make sure that your tracking is adequate. So if we look now, we have the entire pie that is filled and red means that it seems to be good. It also provides a 3D rendering of the volumes. So you have here the end diastolic volume, the end systolic volume, the ejection fraction, the global uh, on the cardiac global longitudinal strain at minus 28.97%. And you have all these segments. So you can actually go in segmental analysis and do the same thing for the apical for three chamber and then have your average for that particular um, view. Uh, and you can look also at the strain rate av average for that particular view. So we've done the three segment, but let's say we would want to keep only the apical four chamber. Um, we are now just with apical four chamber view, and you can see that you would also get an estimate of the end diastolic volume and end systolic volume just based on the uh, apical four chamber view. You can also choose to look at the epicardium and endocardium. Which is not something that is done often, but is of interest if you are interested in the LV mass, for example. And so you can see that there's thickening of the muscle wall during systole. And then this time it provides you with the myocardial, um, for the myocardial fiber global longitudinal strain. And so you can have this time the longitudinal as well as the transverse strain, which is the strain of the myocardial layer, um, which is thickening in systole. So that's why the average is positive. And same thing, you can get it as a rate, which means the speed at which this deformation occurs. So we're pretty much done for the 2D. Um, I'm not going to go through to the time to peak percentage or the other peaks because um, this is just a gist about uh, the uh, evaluation for the strain assessment. So I'm not going to say this. Um, we go back to the main TomTech arena, and this time we are going to evaluate the RV longitudinal strain. So ideally for the right ventricle, you want to have an RV focused view or at least um, an apical four chamber view in which you can see all the layers of your RV. And then here I can see pretty much well my RV. So I'm going to select this one and then put in my RV section. Again, as you can see, there is a flip from the images um, of the adults and the kids. So here we have a few cardiac cycle, but we're gonna wanna use the one where we have our entire RV free wall and septal wall. And I think we have a good selection here because as this goes along, we're changing plane. So we have to be careful. 
And then from here, we're gonna have the end diastole. and then the end of systole. So I'm selecting these two cardiac cycles. Right clicking. And then I can see here that I'm not satisfied with this cardiac cycle. So most likely actually what I'm going to do is go back to my M mode. And for this one, I might actually take only one cardiac cycle to make sure it's the cleanest as possible. Ideally, you wanna have two cardiac cycle to do your strain assessment. So I'm gonna do a new contour and I'm going to identify the septal area up to the attachment of the tricuspid valve, right clicking. And then this time I need to make sure I adjust it to the free wall. And to the septal wall. And then I right click. So same thing that for the LV, I can check to make sure that my tracking is adequate. And you can see first that you have an end diastolic area and end systolic area, similar to the volumes for the LV side, but this time it's an area because of the geometrical uh, configuration of the RV. You can see that you have refractional area change, the same idea that uh, Tom Tank provided you with an estimate of the ejection fraction. So it's one of the elements you might want to record. record. And then we can go to segmental analysis. And then similarly, you can have the strain and the strain rates. So on the strain, you can see that the average is minus 25.5. And then strain rate is minus 2.6 with an E and a probably later A phase uh, or early and late phase of uh, diastolic strain rate on the longitudinal uh, pattern, which here would be 3.88 for the peak. So the peak of this average curve in white is minus 2.65, which, you know, around line 2.6, minus 2.64. Um, and of interest, you can also look at the displacement. And why would we be interested in the displacement is that you can see the segment, which is the uh, septal free wall. Sorry, it's the basal free wall. So you see here it says free wall basal is blue, but it's not true. This is the septum. So just because the adult convention of imaging versus peds. So what we're interested in is that in that brown area to be a correlate of the TAPSI, which is uh, one of the elements of longitudinal function of the RV, is that you can look at the displacement of this segment, which here would give you 4.5 millimeter at its peak, which is here basically 4.5 millimeter. So this is how you would get the strain and strain rate. And if you want to isolate, for example, only uh, your, your septal wall or your free wall, you can always remove um, the elements that are part of your uh, free wall and then only get what's happening with your, sorry, with your septum. So you can see that the blue, blue, and uh, red are identified here. And you can have only the septal wall as well as for the strain. And if on the contrary, you want to have only your septal wall, uh, sorry, your free wall, you can isolate the septal, the free wall and get the average of the free wall. So minus 28.2 would be for the free wall. And then if you want your septum, it would be minus 23.3. So this is for the RV. I'm going to close this. And I'm going to go back to our CPA. So you can do um, by 2D view some of the rotational analysis, although it's a bit more complex because you have to ensure that the um, timing between the acquisition of measurements is very close and that there's no change of loading condition. So it's a bit harder, 
Typically, you rather use it uh, as a 3D measurements. But what definitely you can do is um, use uh, the software to actually measure your circumferential strain and strain rate. So you want to find um, a place where you have uh, your papillary muscles. So here I can see papillary muscle and we're gonna to go to short axis papillary muscle. And in this view, again, we're gonna go and select towards the end because this is where the image of interest was. And then you can also do an M mode if you're interested. And then here I can see that probably my ECG format was not very well picked up. So oh, but I think it was appropriate here. So my end of diastole is here, and my end of systole is at the peak of contraction, which is around here. So from there, we are going to, we could either do the three button technique like their suggestion. So, so that's one of the technique, or you could actually trace the contour. So here I would probably readjust this. And I can see that it's not ideal tracking, so I would redo my contour. So I could either retry this, what the program would offer me, and then take the red to expand it. Or I could say not satisfied and actually trace it myself. So this tracing is not ideal, but we will just go through some of the measurements it provides. Um, and we would probably redo it until we're satisfied with the tracking. So for example, I could really ensure that I'm at the blood endocardial layer interface. The other thing that can be done in this view is obviously the um, radial strain, which we would need to trace the epicardial layer also. So already this is better, but I feel like here my tracking is not ideal. But if I look at the segmental analysis, I can first remove the M mode and I can have strain and strain rate. So my circumferential strain here is minus 27% and my strain rate is minus 3.2. And I can also see my early and late diastolic phase, which are positive. So average for the early would be 4.08. I could go back and actually do an endo and epicardial tracing where I would go and trace the actual epicardium, which provides you with an estimate of the radial strain. So for that, you, you really wanna make sure that you see your entire epicardium. Okay. 
And then basically, since you have trace and epicardium, this time you also have the radial strain, which is positive because in systole, um, it obviously is uh, a positive uh, increase in the thickening of your muscle layer. Uh, and same thing for the strain rate, you have the strain rate appearing here for the circumferential, for the radial strain rate with the circumferential strain rate here. So this is, um, this was the basic workshop for 2D speckle tracking using the Tomtic Arena software for a neonatal echocardiography. And I hope this was useful uh, for purpose of measurement. Uh, this workshop is specifically designed actually for uh, the trainees at the Neocardio Lab and within the neonatal hemodynamics uh, clinical research uh, fellowship at McGill University. So uh, hopefully uh, this was of good use in order to be able to extract data for some of the research echocardiography you'll be doing. Thank you for your attention.